Hi everyone, welcome to the It's Learning Remote Learning Webinar Series. This is Plans Part 2. It is the fourth webinar in our five-part webinar series that we are doing today and again tomorrow. So if you missed any of them and you want to join us tomorrow, we have the uh, link to the website in the chat box where you can go on and see uh, the webinars, the times, and actually register for those webinars. If for some reason those webinars do not fit into your incredibly busy schedule uh, these days, uh, then please go ahead and register. We will follow up with you with the link with the recording. And those of you that are attending with us, you can you will also get a link to the recording as well. So whether or not you attended, we will send out a link to all of the webinar recordings. So that way you can um, take a look at them again or um, look at them for the first time if we did not have a time that fit into your schedule. Uh, also, at any time that you have um, you have questions, we do have um, the email briefings at itslearning.com and we'll be more than happy to take any feedback, any questions, whether or not um, you know, you're watching the webinar for the first time or whether you have some some follow-up questions. If we don't get to those questions today, um, please just email us at briefings at itslearning.com. We'll be more than happy to answer any of those questions you may have. All right, so plans part two. We are gonna dive in um, a little bit more today about how to um, utilize the lesson planner uh, to actually facilitate instruction. And those of you that were um, on the webinar a few minutes ago in plans part one, I kind of gave a little bit of um, a spoiler alert. Um, so we'll have some overlapping information with plans part one and part two today. So um, please make sure if you have any questions, love the questions that are coming in today, please keep them coming. We would love to answer any questions that you have. Um, regardless of really what it is, we'd like to take this time to just open questions up to you. So. Um, just use that question box and ask us anything that you might have, and we will certainly get to those questions as soon as we can. So we're gonna get started with a quick little overview video, and then we will dive into the live site and take any questions you might have um, and with a live demo. So we're gonna get started with that video, and then we'll be right back. Plans, using plans to facilitate instruction. Start by clicking the Plans tab on the Course Toolbar. In order to see your plans, make sure the drop-down filter is set to see the plans you would like visible. If you have standards attached to your course and you would like to add them to your lesson plan, click Add Standards. Then navigate to the standard that is aligned to this lesson plan. Then select insert and close. Now we're ready to add our instructional resources and activities. There are a variety of items you can add such as an assignment, a task, a page, items already added to the course, the library, items from your Google Drive, OneDrive, or from your computer. Right now we're going to start by adding a student assignment. Give your assignment a title and a description. Notice that the description box is the rich text editor that gives you lots of options on how to describe the assignment. And even the ability to add different types of resources in the description box as well. Next, we're gonna add a file for the students to complete for their assignment. We'll add a file from our Google Drive that's already been previously connected. We'll navigate to that assignment. It could even be in a shared drive or a file that's been shared with me. Let's select make a copy for each student. That way they have the ability to edit that document. We'll add a due date. Make sure the students know this is homework and that we're taking a grade on it as well. And then we'll click Create Assignment. Our assignment has been added to our lesson plan and your students are ready to go. Now 
let's see what our lesson plan looks like from the student view. Go to the person icon in the top right and click student. In order for students to navigate through the lesson plan, they click the start button. They can use the front and back chevron arrows. And when they are ready, students can click answer assignment. The student can return to the assignment to view their draft work, or if they're ready, they can submit their assignment. When they have completed viewing the lesson plans, they can click the black X in the top right to return to the course. And now you're ready to utilize the plans to facilitate instruction for your students. All right, so now that our introductory preview video has been completed, we are uh, taking questions. So please don't hesitate to um, use that question box and type any questions that you might have so that we can show you in the live site exactly what that would look like. All right, the first one, Andrea, is there any reason a student can't submit an assignment? Um, if he can't submit the assignment, it kind of depends on what kind of assignment it is. Um, I would say that either um, if it's a make a copy assignment, they need to make sure they're logged into their cloud drive. If it's a regular assignment without make a copy, make sure that he hasn't already previously submitted like a draft form and then um, maybe uh, accidentally click submit or something like that. Um, but that would be one that we would definitely need to troubleshoot. Um, so if that doesn't help, please email us at briefings at itslearning.com so that we can follow up with you to make sure that we are getting that issue resolved for you. Um, here's a question um, being asked. You may be able to answer some of these um, from experience. For those of you who have already been using distance learning, what are some of the problems you have already encountered? So, Andrea, can you answer some of the problems that some of these people may have encountered or um, do encounter? Yeah, so I know just from my personal experience, I do have uh, three kiddos right now. All three of them are in um, distance learning or e-learning. I've also was a uh, online English for 100% online English for uh, teacher. Um, in my one of my previous roles, we had an online uh, virtual uh, high school. And so I taught that as well. So I can tell you that from some of my experiences, something that you might encounter is really just the students not knowing um, what they're supposed to do and when things are due. And so that to me is kind of the biggest thing. All of a sudden we're thrusting these kiddos who are used to being in a classroom with a teacher who is constantly monitoring them and we are thrusting them into a virtual environment where it forces them um, to kind of be a little more self-reliant. Um, so that to me has been um, what I've seen as the biggest adjustment for most students is really kind of knowing where do I go, what do I do, and when, you know, what are my deadlines. Um, so that's where our plans tool could definitely help your students with that. Um, some other things that you're obviously going to get with right now with the current situation that we're in is, um, you know, site slowness, accessibility issues. Um, Lots of sites around the world, lots of various technology sites are all having minimal little glitches. So I would say if you're getting things like you can't log in or you're getting login errors, give it five or six minutes, um, take a deep breath, pack your patience, and really just try to log in again. Um, we're gonna have, obviously, everybody's experiencing um, minor glitches right now just with the um, world that we're living in. So. Um, I would say that if you experience little glitches like that to just, you know, can't access something, can't submit an assignment, it very, it very well could be that there's just glitches in the system and that we need to just try again in a little bit. Okay, great, thanks. How do you get to Google Drive? Is there any way you can demonstrate that, please? Um, so I'm assuming it's the um, Google Drive there's a couple different ways we can 
if we go to a plan and I just want to add something from Google Drive, like I want to add a file or something, I can click right here and add and my Google Drive pops up right there. And then um, these are the most recent files that I was working on or I can click click select file and my entire Google Drive then will open. And so um, you can see that my Google Drive has already been attached. However, if this is the first time that you're accessing your Google Drive, it's gonna ask you to log in, okay? So you'll have to log in for the first time. And then of course, every once in a while when it seems to be not the most convenient time for us, Google's gonna ask us to log in again periodically just for safety reasons. So that is one way to, add, to access your Google Drive. Another way would be um, through the files or the resources. If I just wanted to upload a file to my resources tab, if I wanted to upload a file, I could come here, same thing, I add a file and there's my Google Drive and I can navigate to my Google Drive. Please keep in mind this exact same directions obviously for OneDrive. The other thing that I think you might um, want to know how to access is the make a copy. So the make a copy, when I am doing an assignment where I want to access a Google document for students to edit, I can actually add that document in an assignment. And when I add it by clicking this button right here, then this drop down gives me an option to view or to make a copy. And so I wanted to make a copy of the reading chart so that students could just log in when they open this assignment that um, reading chart opens, they can type in it, and then when they return um, back, all they have to do, it opens another tab, they click that tab, and then their screen switches for them and it says submit assignment. So um, those are the three different ways that we can access the Google Drive within our system. And also that works exactly the same way for 365. So um, those are the three different ways to access those two cloud drives. Okay, here's a question, a similar question. Can you embed Google Classroom into its learning? You cannot embed, that is a great question. We are um, the only learning management system that is a Google Premier partner and we are working very closely with Google so that if you were in Google Classroom, you would have a button that says transfer to its learning. Um, that is on our roadmap, obviously. If you're a Google Classroom user, you know that that's not ready yet because um, there's no button there. Um, but that is something that is on um, the horizon and from what I understand, it's, it's um, coming out pretty quickly. Um, obviously, um, I can't give any specific dates, um, but that is something that is coming down. So we cannot embed per se. What you can do is you can add it as a link. And so anywhere that I would add a resource or in my lesson plans, um, I could certainly come in here and then add um, a link just like I would a link to any other um, website. I can add a link right here and then just copy and paste um, the link into the box. And then when you copy and paste the link into the box, it actually looks like, let's see if I can find one that I had, that I had a link already. There it is, it looks like this one right here. So um, this is a website that I've just embedded. This is Discovery. Um, whether or not it embeds like this, I don't think Google Classroom does. I don't think they let you embed. Some websites allow you to do that and some don't. And so sometimes you're gonna come to a link like this and you're just gonna see this little URL right here. You're not gonna see the actual website. And then um, sometimes you might even see like a little sad face and that's because this provider of this website does not allow embedding. So it really depends on the website. I don't think Google Classroom allows it, but you can try it and if it comes up, it's awesome. Um, but I will tell you, it definitely has to be an HTTPS website. It has to have that S for a secure site. If it's just HTTP, you will not get the embedding, you will just see the URL. So there's a couple, again, a couple different variables as to whether or not that link will actually embed or show within our It's Learning window. But if not, you at least have the link and it's right there and kiddos can click it and go to any website. 
All right, can you please explain how to add a navigation path to a plan? A navigation path. Um, are you talking about the student playlist? Not sure. Okay, so not sure exactly um, the navigation path. I would assume you would mean um, kind of like that playlist that we talked about that we wanted students to kind of navigate or go through. Um, so if that's the case, then all I do is add my resources in the order that I want them to see those particular resources and then put a date. And when I put a date on that lesson plan, then it shows up on the overview page. Take the date off this one real quick. So that way we only see the one on the overview page. All right, so then it shows up on the overview page. Okay, and so then whatever resources I have in here, the students will just navigate through these resources. Okay, and in order to do that, teachers don't get the little play button, but if you jump up here to the person icon in the top right, and as a teacher, I can see a student view and how my students view my course. So I'm gonna click the student view, and then you'll see the start button. This start button is what creates that playlist or that pathway for students that's based on our lesson plans. Okay, so I'm gonna click the start button, and then you'll see everything that's in that playlist, students just navigate through by using the chevrons or the hamburgers. Um, this takes them in order, this takes them through free navigation. So they just basically click through everything that you have in your lesson plan in the order that you've uploaded it into your plans. Okay, so they would watch that PowerPoint and they would um, then complete the assignment. Okay, and then when they are done, they just click the X and they return. So if that's the navigation plan or navigation um, that you would like students to have, once again, that is done in the lesson plan tool. By adding resources in the resources and activity box and then giving the plan a date. And when that date comes for that lesson plan, it automatically pops on the overview page and students just click the start button. Um, I have a comment in addition to that. Um, I have a colleague that does that, but show it shows like orange triangles and for example, students can't do the third assignment if they have not oh. completed the first two. She calls it paths or something like that. She does. This is a very advanced user. So y'all are super awesome. So yes, so that is a different type of, of student pathway. It's actually called a learning path. And it's right here. And what we can do is we can take items in a folder or we can add a learning path from scratch. And I don't have a lot of resources. I might need to jump into a different course real quick to show you. Let me show you real quick. Um, see what courses would have a learning path in it. So this one. So a learning path is exactly the way you described it. It is all of these same resources. Here's one right here. All of these same resources in order, but you can add gatekeepers, okay? So unlike the lesson plan student playlist, the learning path actually does not allow the student to progress until they do something, okay? So I'm gonna take this learning path. Let's see if I can move this uh, learning path back to a folder so I can show you how we got there. So I upload all of my um, items that I want in a learning path. I upload them to a folder. Okay, so here's this folder right here. 
These are all the things that I want the students to do in order, just like I would my lesson plan, only I'm putting them in a folder, okay? Once I have this folder complete, all you have to do is go up to the three dots and say, make a learning path. So it's gonna take all this information that I put into this folder and it's gonna automatically generate a learning path for me. So I'm gonna click make a learning path. And what you'll notice when I do that is the system automatically recognizes what type of resource um, that I have uploaded. They know that this is a video. So the only thing the students can do is view it and then they go to the next step, okay? And then I have a test here. So I have a choice now as a teacher. I can say that they can go to the next step if they've completed it or if they make a certain score, okay? If they make a certain score, maybe I want them to make a 90. And if they do that, they can come all the way down here and just practice their vocabulary, okay? So if they score good on the test, I don't need them to continue learning about context clues if they got a 90 on the quiz they can go down and, and go straight to vocabulary. If they don't score 90 though, they're gonna keep learning about context clues, okay? So if we don't score 90, then they're gonna have to watch a brain pop video. They're gonna have to do, read another um, article that I found in the library, and then they're gonna get tested again, okay? So after they do that, I can do the same thing. I can say completed, or I can say scores at least, and then I can, I can choose again a mastery level Okay, and if they score 80, now they can go to vocabulary. If not, they're gonna learn about context clues again, and they have several more resources, okay? And then they get down here and they can practice their vocabulary and then they have a, a closing item. So I can complete this path and you'll notice when I make it visible to students, I can actually view this now as a student. And so those are the triangles you were talking about. So they would click start and they have the first item, right? And they can't do anything, you know, they, they can't do anything until they go to that next step, which is gonna be hard to do if the, the video has been removed from the library. So, um, but there it is. So it says it's given me amount of time. So then here's the test, right? And then I would start the test. And then based on what I did on the test, it's gonna pick the next thing that I have to do. Okay, so see, it's a gatekeeper, right? So let's see how many questions I have here. One more question, I have one more question. So let's see what I get. Okay, I scored a 25%, so guess what? I have to do the brain pop video, okay? But the student, the other students don't know which pathway I'm taking. So I really like this because it's individualized for every student and they don't necessarily know what the other students are doing. So they will keep going to my next step, then I have to go to the brain pop, so you get the idea. So I would have to continue through this learning path of all of these things until it was completed. Okay, with these gatekeepers. All right, so what I would do is if you are advanced and you are totally awesome, which clearly several of you are because y'all are already talking about learning paths, um, I would create a learning path and then I would just take this learning path and put it in my lesson plan. So that my lesson plan only has that one item in it, right? Because that item has everything that I need. So the one resource that I would add to my lesson plan Let's just add a plan. So the one resource that I would add to my plan is just that learning path. Okay, and that's it. And then when the students went to the overview page and I put a date on this, they would just see the learning path. Uh, of course, it'd have the description. If I had a description, it'd have the standards. And then it would have the learning path and then it would take them through that learning path with those gatekeepers that they wouldn't be allowed to um, advance. Now there are other, it depends on the type of resources, right, that you have in this. Because if I have an assignment, then um, the assignment has to be graded, or I could say if they submitted it. So there's lots of different options in the learning path. So um, 
that was a lot of information on that. So if you have any questions about that or additional questions, because we are coming to the end of our time, please email briefings at itslearning.com so that we can follow up. But thank you very much for that question because that is a different type of navigational path or a type of learning path for students. So that gives you two different options to keep kids on this remote learning pathway and to keep them engaged and on track. All right, Kim, is there any other questions that I need to answer in the last like last minute we have here? I think you've covered everything that's come in. So people um, are, are excited about that and have to digest and maybe come back for questions, <laughs> additional questions later. <laughs> that was a lot. So um, I am certainly glad you asked that question, but that was a lot of information. So please, I am begging y'all, if you, yes, need anything else from us regarding the learning pathways, please don't hesitate to email us at briefings at itslearning.com. We'll be more than happy um, to reach out to you or who knows, maybe that will be a, one of our upcoming webinars. If y'all would like more information on that, please give us that feedback at briefings at itslearning.com as well. We would love to know what topics you would like to see in our upcoming remote learning webinars. For now, thank you very much um, for joining us and we look forward to seeing you at some of our other webinars, our last webinar for the day is getting kicked off in four minutes. So we hope to see you in how to um, add video and audio resources in four minutes. For now, stay safe and we'll see you soon.